amazing to see how quickly a connection develops when somebody gets just a little bit of knowledge and a little bit of exposure to a horse. It's magic. I mean, it, it, there's, there's always a connection and it happens so fast that it's amazing to see. Dr. Sally Broder. Sally, please call me Sally. So we're doing our horse activity day today like we've done so many times and uh, we're lucky enough to be the guest of the Presidio Riding Club. So today you guys are gonna work with a few gorgeous horses and we get to do that with you. I'm Ken Parisney. I'm one of the members here at Presidio Riding Club. There are like 15 members and we have 15 horses here. We maintain the facilities and keep our horses here for the for the right to be able to ride in this beautiful uh, country. My name's Lizbeth, and I have been working with Sally now here for six years, five, six years, doing different programs. And we met when we were studying neuroscience together and saw that we had a very common interest in, um, in equine facilitated education and therapy. My name's Marita. I'm a PATH certified therapeutic riding instructor. So I have worked with uh, different programs in teaching riding, uh, therapeutic riding. And I've been fortunate to have worked with both Sally and Lizbeth with this horse day uh, for the past several years. Uh, I'm Doug, I'm a veteran from Army Reserves. I was in for six years and I've been out for six years now. I'm just kind of free associating and taking advantage of the being outside and being around these majestic creatures that uh, tend to uh, tend to ground us veterans, I think. Well, good morning. My name is Alfred Herpy. I'm a, I'm a veteran. I did seven years in the Navy, two years in the Army, and eleven more years in the National Guard. Uh, so I did I did twenty total. I'm Dave Walker. I'm also a Vietnam uh, veteran. Um, did a couple tours there and then. Very stuff after that, um, retired in 2002 from the military. What a horse alerted would do is they would raise their neck up, up, right? And they would prick their ears forward so that they could listen. And if that is in fear, what that is, is that's, that creates a surge of adrenaline that runs through their neck right there. And any of us have been, we can all relate to a situation where we've had a moment where we were in fear and it could be like a, a great impact, like a, the worst case scenario would be like an IED. If you imagine an IED, that's, I mean, that's to where you get stunned, shocked, maybe thrown unconscious. But if it's far enough away where you can go into the fear mode, you get this rush of adrenaline and rush of um, cortisol which is the stress hormone. What we try to do is we want to get them into this relaxed state. And so today when we do the grooming out there, um, Lizbeth and Marita and I will show you, you know, what makes the horses feel good. And so one thing to watch for you guys is when you're out working with the horses, either walking or grooming, watch when their head starts to drop. So today when you're working with your horses, um, try those things out. And we've got a couple of, um, Suggestions here also is if you haven't done this, hug your horse, right? I mean, there's nothing like hugging a horse. And then try to find your horse's heartbeat. I just find when I'm with my horse, you know, you just slow down and become really mindful and in the present. I don't think they're uh, thinking about where they have to be in tomorrow or next week. They're in the moment and they can help us be in the moment. Yeah, I guess there's some relevance to 
how things are changing so rapidly, you know, in our, in our culture and, and this, some of the same old things are, are there to remind us that, you know, we still have options. <laughs> mm -hmm. Still go at their pace. Yeah. I understand that horses like at these places, they've got these, you know, they have needs for volunteers, so we come out here and spend time with them, socialize them. They're not just fun horses, they're horses for socializing, helping to uh, keep, keep their anxiety away and stuff. Yeah, I'd love to bring this experience back to the rest of the veterans that I live with. Uh, we've done it before at other locations, so hopefully something down the line for us again this year around. That'd be really nice. Guess those horses are praying too, you know. They're praying for these people that have needs and are a little bit displaced, you yeah. know, mentally or spiritually, and they need something to ground them. So it's really a calling, you know, underneath it all. And I'm always willing, so long as I'm ambulatory and my back's in good condition. You know, I'll keep signing those papers and making it happen. One horse at a time. Yeah, I like uh, Chester. He's a good, good animal. Uh, it was fun. It was relaxing. And I felt real good about the whole morning. So thanks for doing this. The thing I learned is he relates differently to different people. And so maybe that's something you can take out of this to, you know, life out in the real world is not everybody relates the same, but it doesn't mean either person's good or bad. It's just they relate on a different you know, different way and have a different way of interacting and, you know, so anyway, so I pulled that away. But I enjoyed um, being with them today and, you know, and, uh, it, it sounds kind of crazy, but when you get a, a horse to go, hey, pet me, do whatever you want, it's like kind of a neat thing because horses, they can be kind of like mysterious or mystique about them, you know. Uh, you see other people with them and doing things, but you don't know all the nuances that go into handling the worst pressure and different things. So.